Have you ever wondered about the fascinating world of the Vikings? Picture a time when the world was a vast, unexplored wilderness. The late 8th to early 11th centuries, known as the Viking Age, was such a time. During these centuries, a group of people emerged from what is now modern-day Scandinavia, Denmark, Norway and Sweden. These people, known as Vikings, were more than just fearsome warriors. They were skilled seafarers and traders, using their intricate knowledge of shipbuilding to navigate the treacherous seas. Their voyages took them as far as North America, Asia and Africa, exploring lands unknown and establishing trade routes that would last for centuries. But they were also warriors, feared and respected for their prowess in battle. Their legacy has left a lasting impression on the world, shaping the course of history in ways that still resonate today. So now that we've set the scene, let's dive into some of the most intriguing aspects of Viking life. One of the most striking things about the Vikings was their prowess on the sea. These seafaring warriors honed their skills on the icy waters of what we now know as Scandinavia, Denmark, Norway and Sweden. A realm of fjords and islands, the sea was an integral part of their lives, shaping them into skilled mariners, traders and warriors. The Viking Age, spanning the late 8th to the early 11th century, was marked by an explosion of maritime exploration and conquest. And what made these expeditions possible? Their advanced shipbuilding techniques. Vikings were masters of shipcraft, constructing vessels that were both sturdy and swift. The longships, with their sleek forms and shallow drafts, allowed Vikings to navigate both the open sea and the shallowest of rivers. This gave them a tactical edge in their voyages, enabling them to launch surprise attacks on unsuspecting coastal communities. But the Vikings' maritime adventures were not limited to warfare and plunder. They were also explorers and traders, journeying far beyond their homeland's borders. Their ships, guided by the stars and the flight of birds, carried them to the far reaches of the known world and even beyond. They sailed east to Asia, south to Africa, and west to North America, a full 500 years before Christopher Columbus. Through their trade routes, Vikings brought back a wealth of goods. Furs from Russia, silks from Byzantium, spices from the Middle East, and even wine from France. These seafarers were as much merchants as they were warriors, their voyages knitting together a network of trade that spanned continents. Their mastery of the sea was truly unparalleled, but their culture was just as rich and complex on land. They were not just seafaring warriors, but also farmers, artisans and poets. Their love for adventure was matched by a deep reverence for their gods and a commitment to their communities. But that's a story for another time. For now, let's set sail to the next chapter of our journey into the fascinating world of the Vikings. The Vikings had a rich mythology and a pantheon of gods and goddesses. This isn't just a historical fact, it's a testament to their vibrant culture and imaginative spirit. Their gods were as diverse as they were powerful, each embodying different aspects of life and the universe. Let's delve into the fantastical world of Norse mythology. Odin, the Allfather, was the god of wisdom, war and poetry. With his two ravens, Hugin and Munin, who brought him news from around the world, and his eight-legged steed, Sleipnir, Odin was a figure of great complexity and intrigue. He was known to sacrifice anything for knowledge, even his own eye. Then we have Thor, the god of thunder, strength and protection. His mighty hammer, Mjolnir, was a symbol of this power, a tool that could level mountains and vanquish giants. But Thor was more than just brawn. He was a protector of the gods and humans alike against the forces of chaos. And let's not forget Freya, the goddess of love, beauty and fertility, but also of war and death. She was a master of Seda, a form of Norse magic and the leader of the Valkyries who chose the fallen warriors for Valhalla. Freya, like many figures in Norse mythology, was a figure of duality, embodying both life-giving and life-taking aspects. These are just a few of the gods and goddesses in the Norse pantheon, each with their own unique stories and influences. And these tales have found their way into our modern world with characters like Thor making appearances in contemporary movies and comics. Norse mythology is more than just ancient belief systems. It's a reflection of the Viking spirit, bold, imaginative, and deeply intertwined with the natural world. It speaks to our shared humanity, our fears and hopes, our battles and triumphs. These ancient beliefs continue to captivate us today, but the Vikings' innovation wasn't just in their storytelling. 
their legacy lived on in their remarkable ship designs, which we'll explore in the next scene. Vikings were renowned for their innovative ship designs, specifically the longship. This statement alone doesn't do justice to the sheer ingenuity and practicality that went into these iconic vessels. The longship, as its name suggests, was a long, narrow boat. This design was no random choice. It served a very specific purpose. The shape of the longship allowed the Vikings to navigate a variety of water bodies, from the open sea to shallow rivers. This was a game changer. It meant they could sail vast distances across the oceans, then continue their journey up a river, surprising unsuspecting coastal communities. No longer could these settlements rely on the safety of their inland location. The Vikings aboard their longships could strike anywhere. But what made these longships so versatile? Well, their shallow draft was a key factor. This means they didn't sit deep in the water, which allowed them to sail in shallow waters as easily as in deep ones. This was an incredible advantage during raids, as it enabled the Vikings to approach their targets stealthily, without the need for deep harbours or ports. In addition to their shallow draft, longships were also exceptionally swift. They were powered by both oars and sails, which allowed for speed and manoeuvrability. This dual power system meant they could keep moving even when the wind wasn't in their favour. The construction of these ships was also a testament to the Vikings' craftsmanship. They were built using a technique known as clinker construction, where the planks of the ship overlapped each other. This resulted in a robust yet flexible structure that could withstand the rough seas. Furthermore, the longship was not just a vessel for transportation and warfare. It was also a symbol of prestige. The prow of the longship was often adorned with intricate carvings of mythical creatures meant to ward off evil spirits and ensure safe passage. These ships were a testament to the Vikings' ingenuity, but their cultural symbols were just as significant. The symbol of Thor's hammer, called Mjolnir, held a significant place in Viking culture. It was more than just an emblem of the Thunder God's might. It was also seen as a protective amulet. Vikings held a deep belief that wearing a pendant in the shape of this hammer would shield them from harm. This symbol was so revered that it was often included in their burial customs. When a Viking warrior passed away, he would frequently be buried with his Mjolnir pendant, signifying his journey to the afterlife under the protection of Thor. This was not just a testament to the strength and power associated with Thor, but also reflected the spiritual and religious beliefs deeply ingrained in Viking society. The Mjolnir was a tangible link between the earthly realm and the divine, a token of protection in this life and the next. While their symbols were powerful, the structure of Viking society was equally compelling. Viking society was hierarchical, but it also offered more rights and freedoms to women than many other contemporary cultures. A Viking's standing in society was often determined by their role and contribution. At the top, you'd find the kings or chieftains leading and making important decisions. Following them were the brave warriors, the backbone of Viking power and exploration, then the hard-working farmers who kept the society fed and functioning. At the bottom were the slaves, often prisoners of war or people bought in the slave trade. Interestingly enough, Viking society was not just a man's world. Women, contrary to what many might assume about this era, held significant roles and had rights that were quite progressive for the time. They were not merely confined to domestic chores, but were recognized as vital contributors to their communities. Viking women could inherit property, which was a rarity in the medieval world. This allowed them to have economic independence and control over their wealth. They could also request a divorce, a right that was nearly unheard of in other societies at the time. If a marriage was not working out, a Viking woman had the power to end it and move on. Moreover, Viking women were not always bound by traditional gender roles. While it wasn't the norm, some women were known to participate in trade and even engage in battle. They had the freedom to step outside the domestic sphere when the situation called for it. On top of these roles, Viking women were also skilled artisans. They were involved in the production of textiles and the crafting of jewellery, contributing to the aesthetic and economic aspects of their society. So, Viking society, while hierarchical, was not as rigidly defined as we might think. It offered space for everyone, including women, to contribute and thrive in their own way. 
this aspect of Viking culture offers us a fascinating glimpse into a society that was more complex and nuanced than often depicted. So there you have it, a glimpse into the fascinating world of the Vikings. Until next time, keep exploring the past to understand the present.